Okay, here we're going to solve a polynomial inequality. The first thing that we want to do whenever we solve a polynomial inequality is to make sure that one side of our inequality has a zero. This one is good, so we'll go on to the next step. So next thing to do is, now that we have zero on one side, next thing to do is to factor the other side. So x squared minus 22x plus 121, that factors to x minus 11 quantity squared. Now some people might be able to look at this inequality and see what the answer is going to be, but let's pretend that we did not see, do not see what the answer is going to be. The next thing that you would do is find what we call boundary points. Boundary points are where our function changes from being bigger than zero to being less than zero. And these points are always where the factors are set equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, because we only have one factor that occurs twice, we only have one boundary point, that's x equals 11. Once we collect all of our boundary points, we want to plot them on a number line. So I'll put x equals 11 here, and then just for fun, maybe zero way over here, and 15 on the other side. Okay, okay. so at x equals 11, I'm going to make this divide up our number line into columns. And I want to pick some test numbers to the right side and left side of my boundary point. Now, easy numbers to pick to the right and left of the boundary point, 0 whenever it's there. And then 15 looks good. I just put that randomly in for reference, but 15 looks like a good number to choose to. So when we plug in x equals 0, it doesn't matter which uh, form of our inequality we can plug it into. We can plug it into this top fac unfactored form or the bottom factored form. Now I find, because I'll make mistakes with order of operations like anybody, the factored version is my favorite. So I'm going to use this one. So if we plug in x equals 0, we would have 0 minus 11 squared is less than 0. But 0 minus 11 is negative 11. Negative 11 <laughs> squared. Oh, my handwriting looks silly. Negative 11 squared is less than 0. But negative 11 squared is 121. All right. <laughs> 121 is less than 0. We need to ask ourselves, is that a true or a false statement? So we have 121 is less than 0. That's definitely a false statement. Okay, we're only looking for true statements here. So this region to the left of 11 is not going to be our answer. Let's plug in 15 then, see if on the right side of our 11 will work. So we plug in 15 for x. 15 minus 11 all squared is hopefully less than 0. 15 minus 11 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Okay, so we have the inequality on the right side, 16 is less than 0. But again, we have something that is false. Normally, what we would do is pick our true column and list that in interval notation as one of our answers. In this case, since we got both falses, then our answer must be no solution. If it's no solution, there is also nothing to graph except an empty number line.